Welcome back. We talk a lot of NFL on this show, and lately it seems like we're talking more about off-field issues yeah. than things actually going on on the field. One issue in particular that the PA has been dealing with for years is that players in the league, from a certain extent financially, basically don't have a ton of rights. <laughs> Am I wrong in saying it that well, way? Contracts are not guaranteed. and It doesn't take much to be released in the NFL, and there aren't many ramifications when a guy is released. NHL teams, guaranteed contracts. Baseball teams, guaranteed contracts. NBA franchises, guaranteed contracts. And a lot of money sometimes. NFL teams, well, and according to Players Association Executive Director Demora Smith, this all could come to a head in the current CBA, which expires after 2020. Smith, in an interview yesterday on Monday Morning Quarterbacks, as we mentioned, with Albert Breer said, and I quote, the likelihood of either a strike or a lockout in 2021 is almost a virtual certainty. Now, this falls in line with what Seattle quarterback Richard Sherman said last month regarding how players can affect real change. Here's what Sherman had to say during an interview with ESPN. And I quote, if we want as the NFL, as a union, to get anything done, players have to be willing to strike. That's the thing the guys need to 100% realize. If you're going to miss game, excuse me, you're going to have to miss games. You're going to have to lose money if you're willing to make the point because that's how the MLB and NBA got it done. They missed games, they struck, they flexed every bit of power they had, and it was awesome. It worked out for them. Can't disagree with a word of that, Timmy. Mm -hmm. So should sports fans be worried at the NFLPA pounding the drums of CBA war? Mm -hmm. Here to discuss further, a man who came through the Maryland football program, five seasons in the NFL, spent time as president of that Players Association, graduate of the Harvard Business School, which I did not get into, mm -hmm. Worked for a time with the NBA Players Association. I tried twice. Oh, that that right. and Ryerson. That right there is some BS. And last but certainly not least, host of the Morning Roast on ESPN Radio alongside Mina Kimes and Clinton Yates, mm -hmm. Dominic Foxworth joining us here on the show. Dominic, welcome to Tim and Sid. It's great to have you. Hey, Chris, thanks for having me. You cut me short on a couple years there. I played for seven years in the league, so, but that's so fine. Tell them again. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them again. Seven. I'll add the seven. <laughs> tell them it's again. fine. I'll, you know, I'll let it slide for now. I, I take responsibility, <laughs> Dominic. But it's Wikipedia's fault. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You can't. You can never. That's a good example hey, for all the kids out there. Can't always trust blame Wikipedia someone else. Term paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you when you got into Harvard, obviously Wikipedia was your research source. <laughs> Not always. It was, my research so source was a nerd next to me. That was my research. Yeah, nice. Source. But that's that, that's idea. why I didn't get into Harvard. No Wikipedia. I just figured it out. Might be the same for Sid too. Yeah. There, there you go. Uh, uh, Dominic, on the we'll get to your article uh, from the undefeated. It was uh, an that, interesting that, as hell. Yeah. Posted last month. It is fascinating. We'll get to that in a second. Big picture, what was your initial feeling to what DeMora Smith had to say yesterday? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by it. So, uh, whether it's genuine or it's just saber rattling, either way, like that, what are you going to say at this point, this far away from it, uh, in order to stake your position uh, for negotiation purposes, then that's all you can say, saying that we're completely happy and we're comfortable and uh, we're probably just going to um, just continue with this deal and there's not going to be any labor strife serves no purpose. You might as well not do the interview. So I assume that he's going to do the interview and I, I hope I'm not telling any trade secrets here. I don't want to sell out my people at the union, but I think at least for the NFL, it's pretty obvious. I don't think that they went into into DEFCON 5 when they saw that. They probably just said, all right, well, that's that's what they're supposed to say. It seems to me, though, Dominic, and correct me if I'm wrong, there seems to be a little bit of a different attitude and almost as if there are those within the union, the players themselves, who feel like they might be a little bit fed up with the right. way that they're being treated. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've been saying for a long time is that the NFL can, only way that they can mess up this thing that they have so that they have going so well is if they get too greedy and they go overboard and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing because one thing that our players are not afraid to do is they're not afraid to fight but if they're comfortable with the way things are they'll be fine but if they feel like their rights are being infringed upon and and on multiple different fronts and they're not being fairly compensated if they feel like the other side is being unfair then our guys i mean play football you have to be to some degree a little bit irrational like running and slamming your body into other people's body is not like common sense stuff. So if you keep pushing guys like that, then you are, you might be in for a fight that you may not be, you may not have been expecting. In, in, in terms of the tough talk, do you agree with what Richard Sherman said to Jalen Rose in that interview uh, last month? Is there, how much truth was there in that? 
I mean, I think I agree with the sentiment. I don't necessarily agree with the, the core of that issue. So I agree that there, sacrifices need to be made to make gains. And I agree that sacrifices were made across all the sports, including football. Football was at the forefront for many of the major um, salary cap, or not salary cap, but salary and players' right, rights advancements back in the uh, late 80s and the early 90s. So, and those players sacrificed quite a bit. So I agree with that. But uh, fundamentally, I don't think that, I think the power asymmetry between the league and the, and the players is such that going on strike isn't going to help, frankly. Right. The, the, the part of this that I always understand while having the conversation is not many fans are okay with giving the players more power um, for a multitude of reasons. Not many fans are okay with giving the players more money for a multitude of reasons. But the decertification is a huge part of that, and that was what your column was about. Right. Um, although it would take a ton of guts, can you give us kind of the Cliff Notes version of why sure. you think that that needs to happen for the power to be granted to the players? Sure. So we can go back to the Richard Sherman comment about going on strike. So if you go on strike, I used, um, I did some math in there. So hang with me for the, <laughs> um, for the, uh, for last year, the revenue is estimated at about $12 uh, billion. So for 1% of revenue, that equals about. Carry the two. $67,000 <laughs> per player. Yeah. So it's 1,800 players in the league. So the idea that you would sacrifice for uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of games, you might miss some big checks, and that the big payoff at the end might be $67,000 is foolish. And then you look at it from the other side. For the owners, there's only 32 uh, teams, so 1% then equals $3.5 million per team into perpetuity. So it's not just for one season. It's $3.5 million for as long as they own the team. So let alone the fact that they already have billions of dollars and they're not hurting for money and many of our players only have three and a half year careers and they are in many cases looking forward to this big payday that they've been working forward working towards put all that stuff aside just in sheer motivation who's going to benefit more from that one percent it's the owner so you put all that together and i don't think that enduring a lockout or striking is something that is beneficial to the players which leads me to the idea of decertification so like many of the things that we accept to be commonplace in in our lives in canada and in america things like uh salary caps are not things that we have to endure drafts like you don't come out of college and get drafted to uh whatever law firm that you want to go to or out of law school those sorts of things these are things that are in violation of antitrust law. The only reason why those things exist is because the union exists. And the premise behind that is that the union is a countervailing force against the league that has equal power. So if they can battle it out, negotiate, whatever comes out on the other end will be fair. But in actuality, the union does not have nearly the amount of resources or power as the league has. So I think that's why decertification comes up, because if you decertify, then all the things that they're doing, the salary cap, the fact that they collude and that they share revenue, yeah. and um, the fact that they they limit their free agent, you don't have free agency, they limit your mobility, and that the 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 um, commissioner can fine and suspend people for whatever he feels like. All those things exist, but they would not exist under antitrust law. So I just think that the players should consider, and it's not just for football. I actually think it might be better, even better for the basketball players, because the value that those guys have, like if you think about LeBron James. Yeah. He has a, a max salary at this point, but if you remove the salary cap or you remove all those restrictions, then potentially he could, if he wanted to come play for the Raptors, you guys could give him 10% of the team and he could come play for the Raptors, which yeah. is something that is now uh, against the rules. So I know it's not necessarily fun, legal mumbo jumbo, but I enjoy it. <laughs> well, anything that gets Lebr the Raptors LeBron, people up here are fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking, so you're legal you're talking new language. By the way, Dominic, I was going to do the math for you. I didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just so you know why I didn't jump in and help out. We're team players he's here. He's such you a know, nice guy. You know, he's such a nice guy, and I'm so smart, you know, with the numbers. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you, because that would have been embarrassing. Yeah, I, I mean, come on here talking about how smart I am, and then you just storm in and take I over. Know. That would have been rude. I'm glad that you. we're all on the same page. I know. Yeah. I know. It's not like I looked up Wikipedia for anything today or anything and made myself look. That. Dominic, uh, phenomenal stuff. Uh, we're, you got a lot of fans up here. Thank yeah. you very much oh. for giving us time on a Friday. And let's do this again down the road. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate it. I can't wait. All right, there's Dominic Foxworth, uh, who comes to it from a, an angle unlike many others. Oh, yeah. And the interesting thing to me, and maybe the next time we have him on, we can talk about the billable hours that are involved with this stuff.